discussion held in the last two days and the events uh, summary also. Thank you. Namaskara. Perspective Working Group meeting uh, happened here. As we had briefed earlier, we had 14 uh, D20 members physically attending here, plus 10 invitee countries, plus 10 international organizations, total 57 delegates. Uh, Foreign delegates attended this meeting on 28th and 29th. So, 28th, we had three sessions. I will briefly tell about what happened in the sessions. Of course, I will not be able to share in detail about the members and their responses, but I can give you an overall view of what happened. The first day, we had uh, three sessions and one workshop. The first session is the principles of financing cities of tomorrow that are inclusive, sustainable, and resilient. So in the infrastructure working group, this is the flagship theme that we have chosen. So from India side, we had prepared a draft paper and circulated to all the members in advance. So members suggested few points. They all agreed that it is a very well prepared draft and in order to shorten the deliverable, there were a few suggestions given by the members. So some of the suggestions are like, it should be covering the circumstances in the developing as well as developed world. It should be applicable to small, medium and larger kind of cities. So it should be like, you know, uh, representative of the national circumstances as well as the city level circumstances. And also some of the members uh, asked us to uh, focus on the inclusivity that is gender, age, physically disabled. So what kind of infrastructure should be built for taking care of the needs of these special groups? And uh, there was also discussions on various financing options that we had presented in the paper. And members asked us to include successful case from all countries, not only from the uh, developed economies, also from the developing economies. So this is broadly the first session. It was very well received by the members. The presidency's output. These suggestions will be deliberated further and in the meeting that is going to happen in June, we will again present and in the June meeting this is going to be finally approved by the infrastructure working group. So that is the first session, that's what happened. On the second session, uh, we are coming out, the infrastructure working group is coming out with a compendium of various successful models and cases where financing cities happen. So to finance a city, as you all know, apart from the own revenue and the government grant, take loan from banks, they can take loan from international organizations like World Bank, ADB, etc. They can um, float a municipal bond or they can use the uh, land value capture methodology they can go for transitorial development. So there are various financing options as well as non-financing options. Non-financing options are the national policies, urban planning approaches which facilitate financing. So this is a broad outline and what we are trying to do is we are going to bring out a compendium which will contain 50 to 25 case studies of each instrument where it was successfully used. Say for example, town planning scheme is one of the example if we take in the entire world, where was this successfully used and how did it help that particular municipality or city to get more finance. 
So this 25 case studies will look into various aspects just I mentioned and that will become a very good reference document for every other country and municipality to replicate. So this work, presidency, that is India along with, there is an organization called OECD. So both of us are combinedly preparing this document. So that was the second session. So this draft outline was presented by OECD. Our members have again very well received it and uh, this will become a very good reference document for all the countries and municipalities. And then third aspect, third session is, there is a concept called quality infrastructure indicator. So this work was done in the last few presidencies. I think it was initially done by Japan and then it was carried out. Uh, so last year in the Indonesian presidency, the QII was approved and endorsed. That means every other member has accepted the proposals. Again, it is a voluntary and non-binding kind of an indicator. So what does it do? So it studies any infrastructure project which is executed. There are certain parameters under which they will evaluate that project, whether that work is good, whether that work is serving the purpose for which it is intended, and then is there any scope for improving future infrastructure projects that the ultimate outcome that we want to derive out of that. So that framework also was presented and members had various suggestions on that. So there are pilot studies which are already happening under this uh, deliverable. So in the June meeting, we will uh, present the results of the pilot studies that are happening. The pilot project is spread across the world. It's not only in one particular country. Uh, currently there are about uh, four projects are under study and we are likely to get many more projects nominated for pilot study from different members because during the interaction several members came forward to nominate pilot study for this. So this was the third session. And post lunch we had a sideline workshop. The workshop is titled as Infrastructure Taxonomy. The infrastructure taxonomy means various countries have different definition of what is the meaning of infrastructure. I mean, what are the kind of works or sectors are classified as infrastructure. That is different across different countries. Second, within countries also, different organizations have different definitions. For example, the ministry will have one kind of definition. The central bank may have one kind of definition. So what is the implication of that? Because different people have different definitions, financing becomes little difficult because based on the classification of a particular sector as an infrastructure sector, the tenure of the loan that is given, the interest rate, the risk assessment, and then the capital adequacy, everything changes. So these four parameters change based on the infrastructure definition. So there was discussion around that. Very interesting uh, uh, panel discussion happened. Experts from across the world participated who have done a lot of work on the national accounting methodologies. As well as interestingly, this time, the private sector players also were represented in the panel. So they also brought in the perspective of how private sector is looking at what has to be called as infrastructure. Because we are discussing private sector financing also as one of the main driver that will cater to the urbanization needs. So it was a very good comprehensive discussion. One side, how the governments are defining what is infrastructure. On the other side, how private sector is looking at it. Then how do we sort of find a balance so that we get funding from the private sector also was the main theme of that workshop. It was also a very productive workshop. Then that was day one. So on day two today, we had basically four sessions. So the first session in the morning we started with 
something called global infrastructure hub. This global infrastructure hub is a G20 formation. So it is based right now in Australia. So this entity is doing work related to infrastructure. They collect data, they bring out uh, reports on infrastructure, <coughs> sector studies, etc., etc. So there is an issue about this entity's continuance. So based on what model this entity should take and how it, it will function in the future, that was a legacy discussion. So that, that was the first session. And in the second session, a very, very important session that was like, if the city has to be inclusive, that means if it has to cater to every section of the society of the people, like gender, different age, different requirements in terms of uh, their ability, social strata, all that, if the city has to take care of everybody and treat them all equal and provide services to them, what are the requirements for the city? So this work is being handled by World Bank. So the title of the report will be Enablers of Inclusive City, Enhancing Access to Urban Services and Opportunities. So World Bank presented an outline and then they are going to come out with various case studies and finally the major part of the report will be what are the policy instruments? What are the policy instruments that can bring inclusivity in the cities? So that is the outcome of this report, which was very much appreciated by the members. And members gave suggestions emphasizing um, different, whatever I just mentioned, somebody said, you know, uh, physically, uh, differently abled people and their requirement has to be kept in mind. Somebody said the use of technology and e-governance in breaking barriers and you know making services accessible to people should be uh, discussed. So there were various suggestions around it, uh, but it's a well-rounded report. It'll be a very interesting report. And then the next uh, session was on capacity building for urban administration. Now, on the one hand, we are talking about financing cities. On the other hand, we are talking about inclusivity. We want cities to be sustainable. We want cities to be resilient after disasters or for you know, any climate-related change. So if one has to handle all this, if a city government, if a municipality has to handle all this, what kind of skill sets are required for the administration? And what kind of trainings are required to build the skill sets which are there? So this report is going to look at municipal level requirement of various skills that are required for financing cities of tomorrow in order to make the cities inclusive, resilient and sustainable. So here the report will look at the institutional requirement. Then there are individuals who are working within that it can be an elected representative or officers like the municipal commissioners and other people. And then there is community around it where the municipality gives service, that is the people, and then the resident welfare associations. There will be civil society organizations like NGOs. And then finally, how a participatory planning approach is required so that the decisions made really reflect the needs and aspirations of the people. So this is what this report is going to look at and they will suggest a framework which is customizable to every city. We will give a framework but each city can customize according to its own and strength. Some city may be very big, their requirements may be little on a higher scale, some city may be you know, smaller in size and their requirement may be little different. So we are giving a broad framework under this and every city can customize this and adopt this for a capacity building of their municipality. And then the final session, the last session was on a thing called infra tractor. What is infra tractor? So across the world, governments are providing budget for infrastructure development. 
Similarly, private sector also is investing into infrastructure works. But at one place, how do we get this information? So each country has its own budget document, or each state government has its own budget document, each municipality has its own budget plan documents, in which these details are there. But if you want to know at a country level or at the world level what is happening on this infrastructure, we don't have a mechanism to get this data. So this infra tracker is trying to address this issue and trying to collect, collect all the data from different published documents, which are already available in the public domain. Maybe the country budget document or the subnational, that is the state government budget documents. So we are trying to develop an online tool through the entity that I just discussed, GI Hub. They are working on this tool. And this tool has the provision of collecting this data from a published document. And anybody can validate this. This country or the state or the municipality can validate and say, yes, these figures are correct then we will publish it for the public consumption. So that is the final session infra tracker. So in this, this is also a legacy work, I mean, which happened in the previous presidencies. But what is the improvement that we are trying to bring here is, so far, people have to do data entry. It's not an automatic tool. Now we are trying to automize this process, pick up the data from published documents, and then the country or anybody can validate it. Once a validation is done, this becomes a uh, published document. So that is the uh, final uh, discussion that happened. So if I can sum up, it was an excellent two days of uh, deliberations. All the members participated uh, very actively. Those members who are not able to participate physically here, they were all available online and they were able to make interventions and contributions during every session. So we had a very good productive session and second infrastructure working group meeting in Vishakhapatna. And in the next two months, we will work on all these suggestions that have come here. And our third working group meeting will be in the month of June, towards the end of June, uh, in Rishikesh. So we will be gearing up for that. Thank you. And I will take questions. CM sir came for an 